started off learning from like just some new copywriter telling you how to get your first client. And so what? You're not gonna quit. But even when I first moved to Dubai, like and we started hanging out, like I remember you were saying like, yeah, like we haven't really grown that much. When I moved to Dubai, it was like the opposite. We had so much fast growth. So like in terms of money Twitter, do you cringe more these days? Or do you like, all right, it's or interesting, you, you know, like good guys. Assalamu alaikum everybody, how are you guys doing? This is Farouk, aka, you know, like on Instagram and Twitter's Ecom Legend. So, um, I've been now in here, Dubai, about, I mean, like for two years or something. And I've met many people, uh, interesting people, funny people, but also like a group of guys where I'm like, hang out, have fun, and talk about serious and good like conversation business. So I decided to just do a podcast I don't really even have like a big structure or something to do, but I just know you guys will love this. So on the right of me, we have Z, Zarek. Bro, are you blind or is it like what happened? No, like, why do you have glasses? My eyes are fucked up, so I'm just wearing glasses because I look like a panda. I got hit in the <laughs> face. <so. laughs> and as well, as well here on the front of me, we have the man himself from Chechnya, Anwar, my man. Let's go. So um, can you maybe please introduce yourself at first, my man? Yeah, so... Uh, some of you may know me from Twitter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't take this seriously. No, no, just do it, just do it. Uh, some of you might know me from Twitter. Others may know me as the 13th best direct response copywriter of 2023. <laughs> 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 There's actually an article that says that, so I, can't, I can say that. No, no, keep, keep going. And um, yeah, some of you might know me from Twitter. Uh, basically, my name's Eric. I run a direct response agency and I, yeah, that's it. Just long form direct response. Uh, we do a lot of email list management and um, been living in Dubai for like, I think, seven months. And you, bro? On board? Yeah. Um, I run a creative agency, creativeflywell.io. We work mainly with uh, e com and mobile app companies. We help them get better performance on paid social, Facebook, Meta, Instagram, TikTok. And yeah, I've it moved to Dubai a lot. Like a few weeks before you, bro? No, I yeah. was before you. I uh, showed you. Uh, <laughs> So like, how did you ever meet? It was like through, through Instagram, right? We just like, we did some DMs, we talked, we met up directly. But yeah, man. So let me ask you this at first. Uh, you know, there's many questions I can ask, but I'm going to ask you right now. Many people, um, especially like, you know, like on Money Twitter, um, they are wearing Datejust. Why mm. do you hate Rolex Datejust so much? <laughs> to be honest, right. it's not even that bad. I like it a yeah. little bit. I don't have it myself, but why do you hate so much? See, we can me. wrap this up already now. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'll start by saying I'm not like an expert on watches. I have a few and I have nice watches, but yeah. I don't have like hundreds or a big collection. Although I plan on having a huge collection over Tell the years. Tell me. So what do you have right now? Like which watches? Uh, I won't divulge all of them, but I have like, <laughs> I have a day date, which some people have seen. I have a sub. I got a couple other. That's yeah. it. Nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess this is like my most crazy watch. It's not even that crazy though. But anyway, the reason I don't like the date just is because I feel like, especially these days, everyone has a date just. And at the price level, you pay for it like $15,000. K like $15, There's so many cooler watches you can get. And the date just just has like drop shipper, growth <laughs> consultant energy, bro. Like if you wear a date just, growth no one's going to look at you. People are going to think you're a drop shipper, a growth consultant. Like it's just not cool. Like you'll never see someone who has real money wearing a date just. Mm -hmm. But you will see them wear like a Submariner. It's not about the cost of the watch. It's just the watch is shit. Because if you really had money, you'd get a day date instead. Makes sense. So what do you think of like a date just? Like what's your opinion on it? Me, myself. Yeah, bro. do you have like, is it like same as Z or? <laughs> nah, but I, I mean, I don't have any watches, but I do agree with Z. It is, it is kind of cope. Yeah. It's like, because now I have a Rolex, but. Uh, it's cope, bro. It's a shit Rolex. You may like, as well just get like, not have one. Right. All right. So I want to ask you this, uh, Z, you know, like to you at first. I mean, in any part, it's always like introduction, like start, like where do you come from, all kind of shit. And, you, and as well, like you've done it like several times already, I think. Um, so like. Like, I remember we had, like, a dinner. There was you, and me, and Marek, and Philip. So, the amount of value and the high level of about, like, direct response, long-form copywriting, and name it, I just couldn't understand it at some point. So, why? So how and why do you think you have gotten into, like, this level of, like, with, how do you say, like, with, uh, with the copywriting? Because um, I've been doing it for, like, five years now. Most people, you see who are like in direct response, they started like last week and they're trying to get their first client. 
for me, it's like I started when I was 17. And even before that, I was already like learning about it and reading about it. I got my first client, which was a shit client. It was like $500 a month. But I was already writing copy. People were paying me to write copy when I was 17. And I didn't learn from like some random guru or anything. I learned from like the people who invented direct response, like Gary Halbert, just all the OGs with the principle based books on uh, how to write copy, how to convert a customer, how to use, how to write long form, all that stuff. And I never, ever once started off learning from like just some new copywriter telling you how to get your first client for 5k a month. <coughs> it was always just principles. And I think I just stuck to the same principles and focused on the basics for so long that I became pretty good. Interesting. Interesting. So, and you know, like also like about you, like onward, because the VSL that you made as well, that you have like on your, like on website on creative flywheel, um, it's insane. And I was shocked that you said as well, that you just wrote yourself. Yeah. So like how did your like story, like, like became about like direct response and like virtual agency, like yeah. how did you learn it like to this level? Because to be honest, I was surprised that you were that good at it. Thank you, bro. Um, I wouldn't go like from the very beginning, but I'd say the direct response journey started back in uh, 2020 when I moved to New Zealand to work for probably one of the fastest growing e-commerce agencies yeah. um, in New Zealand. And then I was hired as a media buyer back then, but <coughs> they were at the point of, of like figuring out the whole like creative system and whatnot. And I just organically was interested in, and you know, high converting creatives. I was just like on on the weekend, I would spend a few hours going through ad libraries, just swiping creators that I really, really like. And then whenever we would like gather in the boardroom, ideating some creative ideas for a new client that that agency has signed, I would come up with the best ideas and they would like the executives would recognize that. And then they just told me, okay, you write the copy now. And I did that for about like six or seven months. And then I felt confident about my skill and so i resigned moved back to russia and then in 2021 basically spent the whole year kind of freelancing ahead a few clients didn't make a lot of money probably like 5k a month tops and then closer to the end of the year i decided to take it seriously created like a, my first vsl went on to twitter started posting and started getting loads of clients that was also like you know the right timing because in 2022 early 2022 it was like when the whole TikTok and the ugc boom uh, took place so I was in the right time, definitely, with my skill set. And then, yeah, clients started reaching out to us. We started getting good results from our outbound efforts. And, yeah, here I am now in Dubai. It's interesting, interesting. But, like, this whole journey, like, from Chechnya to Dubai, <laughs> can you maybe, like, go into more in-depth? Because, <laughs> look, there's many guys in space, uh, yeah? yeah? But you're the first guy, like, you know, like, on, like, on Money Twitter, like, you know, like, whatever, name it, who's, like, like a high level guy, you know, you know, like, you know, like he knows his shit. I know it. Um, and like from Chechnya. So how did like I'll go about, you know, from Chechnya yeah. to Dubai? Tell the story, bro. I, I just want to hear it. Well, I never actually lived there. I was born and raised in Moscow, but my parents are from Chechnya. Mm -hmm. um, and I just visited occasionally. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if you want me to elaborate a bit more on that question. Okay. I never lived there, bro. Oh, you it's never like, lived there? I never did. Okay. Yeah, no, just. Bro went there every once once or twice a year maybe yeah. but i don't know when will be my next time going back to russia with all the crazy shit happening there yeah yeah so like did your business grow like a lot more you know like when you came to dubai uh <laughs> actually not because we went through uh, a bad phase of stagnation but in the past couple of months it's been on uh yeah hockey stick growth mm. okay yeah I mean, it's part of the game, bro. Like, for us, it's not always the it best. It is. It you know, is. I'm not going to pretend that it's been... No. I mean... Great. So, like, let me ask you. So, then, um, like, how do you go about, like, this stuff? Like, you have some good months, you move to Dubai, and then some stuff happens. It's not always the best. Like, how do you, like, you know, like, keep yourself up and, like, like motivate and discipline to mm -hmm. still, mm -hmm. like, you know, like, go for it every day and push it? Yeah. Um, I mean, it all just, like, comes down to the things that you can control. It's the inputs. So like the the worst thing that you can do is start like reflecting and being like whatever unmotivated. Like I don't even like using the word unmotivated or unmotivated. It's like not even a part of my um, lingo, really. Um, you just got to be mindful of your inputs. It's like, okay, if 
clients are churning, then what's causing this, right? It's like, is your service not good? Or like the this thing that you're offering is not whatever, providing the, the results or if it, is it dying out as a thing, right? Our main service is like UGC content and clearly like the whole, the consumers in the US are becoming less responsive to it. That is a thing. And also like as an offer, it's not as hot as it was last year. So getting clients beca you know, became harder. And then, yeah, man, I think whenever you're going through like a downtime, just gotta be mindful of inputs and then kind of making sure that the inputs are quality and the quantity is also there. It's like you're staying consistent with them. As simple as that. Yeah. Interesting. But as, it's inevitable, right? Like anyone who's been in the business game for Happens. whatever year, two, three, <clears throat> five years, we've all had that, like, right? So when you go up and then down, it's like, so what? You, you, you're not gonna quit, no. right? Yeah. No, even when I first moved to Dubai, like, and we started hanging out a lot. Right. Like, I remember you were saying, like, yeah, like, we haven't really grown that much recently. But it, at that, it was weird because at that time, when I moved to Dubai, it was like the opposite. We had so much fast growth. But mm -hmm. just before I moved to Dubai, I was like stagnating a lot. Mm -hmm. Not much was happening. So, uh, yeah, like you said, it's just part of the game. Mm. So let me ask you this. Um, imagine you have to start all over again. No connections, no money. How are you going to... Like get back again? Nah, I'd be fucked, most likely. I think because nah. I wouldn't be like okay, I wouldn't be fucked. But what, what question do you get to remain your like your skill set and your network? No, no skill set. No, no, no skills, no network. You just have to oh. just bro. Because okay, when I that's started, fucked. Bro, that's <laughs> fucked. Because I started during the pandemic. Yeah. During the pandemic, all the normies were spending money online. <laughs> <laughs> like all the NPCs were at home just buying shit online because yeah. you couldn't leave the house. So if everyone's spending money online and the government's giving them like stimulus checks, there's so much more money in the space. Crypto market was making a ton of money. Yeah. Brands were less risk averse. So they were they had higher marketing budgets. And it was just so much easier to start back then because, I mean, everyone was willing to spend. Yeah. Brands were more profitable. I think Facebook ads were like, that was oh, before 100%. the big Facebook Ooh. update. Yeah. So even like just as any service provider working with these kind of companies, like it was just really easy to get get your foot in the door. So, like, what if you have, like, the knowledge and, like, the, and, you know, like, let's say the connections and something happened, boom, everything gone, you broke your shit. So, how are you going to get up again if you have those connections? Like, I mean, you know about, like, Escape the Matrix, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, whatever, yeah. all this kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> like, like, what would you do? Dude, with, okay, if everything went to shit and I still had my network and skills, I could get, like, I would be making 10K a month within one day of just making phone calls yeah, to like yeah. my friends. Not asking them for money, but just offering my service to them. Because my yeah. friends know it's valuable. Some mm -hmm. of my friends are making, a, like running really big companies. And if I can help them make more money, they're obviously going to pay me. And they would probably, like, I, not even friends, just like old clients, that kind of shit. Like, hey. I would pay you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> even like he would pay me to write copy for him. If, of course. You know, like, so it, I wouldn't be worried about that. But I guess to answer the most important question, if I was to start from scratch with no skills or network, I would just learn how to write long form and I would just focus on principles because even though I started yeah. during COVID when it was easier to get your foot in the door with brands and like sell stuff online, um, as long as you learn the principles, well, the principles mm -hmm. will never ever change. The principles have been the same for millions of years, yeah. the principles of how the human brain works. So if you just familiarize yourself with those, you'll be fine whether it's COVID or a nuclear war. war. Like you'll make, okay, maybe not nuclear war, but you get my point. Like you'll yeah, make yeah. money. Yeah. You'll yeah. be able to sell to someone, just study the principles. So that's what I would do. I think yeah. if you study the principles of direct response for like two years and you implement what you learn, there's no way you won't be making money. Yeah. I would say like copywriting and sales are the most whatever proof skills. It's like whatever happens in the world, if you if you learn how to write copy and you learn how to sell like over the phone, like yeah. through Zoom calls, like... Whatever happens, you can be sent to, I don't know, to, to an island with like zero people on it. If you have a phone and internet connection, like you'll be good. And that's one of the things that I regret uh, because when I was starting in the whole marketing game, I was obsessing about like learning skills of media buying and like in chatbots, like playing with tools, you know? And I feel like some people still make that mistake, but like these tools, they come and go, the, the mediums, they come and go, right? Like the thing with TikTok, people are still uncertain whether it's going to be banned in US or not, right? It, it may go away. But again, if you have the skill of copywriting and you know how to sell, whatever happens, like, you'll be good. Yeah, and I mean, I'd even go further and say, like, if you know how to write long-form copy, you're yeah. good. Because if you can write, like, a Facebook ad, 
and that's all you're good at. You're a Facebook ad copywriting. It's not really, to me, that's not a thing. It's like mm -hmm. you're either a direct response copywriter or you're not. If yeah. you can write Facebook ads, you can't write anything else because all you know yeah. how to write is Facebook ads. Yeah. But if you can write long form, like a 45 minute VSL or whatever, and it, you, you can make it convert, you can write a Facebook yeah. ad without yeah. even like having to learn about it. You know how to write long form. Obviously, you can write an email or a Facebook ad or an e like a cold email, anything. Yeah. Because it's just long form uses, long form requires all of the principles of direct response with upsells, downsells, just everything, leads, headlines, closes, yeah. bullet points. And yeah. And what, yeah. I'll add to that as well. Like, what's also remarkable about long form is that it's generally applied to niches like health, um, financial one, and maybe some info. And those are the hardest ones to crack. So like if you're in, like if you write copy for emails and you work with, I don't know, like fashion brands, like that that's an easy mode, form, right? Yeah. Like whatever, like luxury accessories, like some gadgets, like you're not even a copywriter. It's like, yeah, you, like, I don't consider, if you literally right? like, write like design emails for like some brand that sells t-shirts, like, dude, you're not a copywriter. You're yeah. just yeah. putting words together because no one needs long form copy to be convinced to buy a t-shirt. Yeah. They look at the t-shirt and if they exactly. like it, they'll buy it. Whereas like if someone's investing in something that they think could make them richer in retirement, could allow them mm -hmm. to live on an island with their wife, with their kids paid for, yep. then they need long form. You need yep. a 40 minute VSL to convert them because they're going to be, yep. they're going to be skeptical. And uh, people don't just buy things like that on a whim. You need, you need a lot yep. more to convert them. And that's why yep. when you see brands in this space, like there's a lot of brands in this space who crush it doing it like this, of course, but they could make so much more money if they were a little bit more aggressive with our marketing mm -hmm. and, and use more long form. So, so, so like aggressive in terms of like, like long form, but, um, you know, like, let's say you write, you know, like six, seven or like fucking, uh, like 8,000, like, 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 like word of like, long, like, you know, like long form and you put it out, the ads go live and it goes like total shit. How do you deal with that? And how do you make sure it gets like good again? Because you are so convinced that you're copywriting is so good. Yeah. So how do you like like deal with it? Because it's like, very how do I deal with it? Like yeah. just za. Just <laughs> how do I deal with it? Like as a blow to my confidence, or like how do I actually approach the situation? No, like me? like approach the situation, oh, like okay. like fixing it. Oh yeah. yeah. So I mean, usually you wouldn't just launch ads straight to a sales letter, although it can work in theory. It can and it does work. It does. Work. Usually it's like you have an advertorial that then sends them there, or you're using like native traffic or whatever. But if you launch an ad or you launch a funnel and it doesn't do well then you just reiterate and try again. Mm. Or it maybe it has like a 0.5% conversion rate. And in order for it to be profitable, it needs to be 1.5. Well, now you just write a new headline, test mm. that. Maybe the headline alone could make it 1.5%. Mm. Or maybe you just rewrite the close. Pay someone who's a better copywriter to look at it. Research the market better. Like honestly, if it doesn't convert, it's because you don't know the market well enough. That's yeah. the only reason. The writing is the easy part. It's knowing the market, that's the, that's the hard part. Yeah. So it's just reiterate and try again and split test new things and split test one thing at a time so you know what actually caused the increase or decrease in conversion rate. Yeah. So did you ever like as well like write those long form, you know, like those uh, those long form like stuff as well like for like EU markets or was other, or was it like always like for the big five? Um. No, always for like America, Canada, that kind of stuff. But the thing is, I don't see what the difference would be with an EU market. It's like they're still English speaking humans. Yeah. They still have the same pains and and same wishes. I I wrote a few VSLs. One was a twelve minute long. The other one was like thirty three minute long for the French market. I wrote it in mm. English, and then we've hired a translator and a voiceover artist to to do those. Um, it did well. I mean, I want to say it did well. It spends like I think eighty k a month euros. Nice. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. So, so guys, another topic I want to open is that about like like money twitter and instagram so um what's the quality of followers on money twitter mm. compared to instagram and i want to start with you know with you anwar yeah i mean it's unmatched it's like i remember when i got on twitter that was last year uh i even remember the date i really have good memory for dates i got on twitter on the 22nd of january and then like a third or the fourth video that i made was a thread like a creative breakdown or some stuff Mm -hmm. And then I had 20 followers, like random, the most random followers. Like, and then at that level of only 20 followers, uh, that thread got me to like 200 followers. And then I got, why well, you laugh? 
I hate you. Let's wrestle. And then that got me actually seven uh, inbound calls with uh, seven and eight figure brands. Yeah. It's like, imagine have, getting that on, on Instagram. That's mm. impossible, impossible, you know? And like, I don't know, I can give you loads of other examples. Like right now, I only have like 3.5K. Will you laugh here? <laughs> nah, like, it's not 3.5K. Right? <laughs> yeah, what? It's, it's nothing, but it, it still brings in a lot of business, mm. you know, with yeah, like is, yeah, high level right. entrepreneurs. Like some people that are following, they're like investors and, and VCs. I could, I can't imagine having that on Instagram. It's like, what is 3.5K on Instagram? That's like your ex girlfriend, that's your classmate, right? Mm. It's like, that's your sister. <laughs> it's, it's nothing, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, well, I think in terms of business. Yeah. Yeah, if we're talking in terms of business, Twitter is obviously higher quality because people follow you for your thoughts. Exactly. On Twitter. Exactly. And like, also, not just business, but like connections too, because people yeah. will know if they like you or not based on. I guess if you're a polarizing person or you tweet your thoughts. Yeah. Now with me, like <clears throat> my, I don't necessarily use Twitter as much to generate business for the agency, although it kind of do <coughs> because. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. I kind of do because um, it brings like offer owners onto my newsletter. And then once they're on my newsletter, I can pitch them to join the agency. But usually yeah. I like we aren't doing much client outreach anyway because we're at full capacity. But yeah, Twitter is definitely higher quality than Instagram. But I think they serve different purposes. You can't even compare them. Yeah. Instagram's for posting photos and showing off. Yeah, yeah. Twitter is for something completely different. Yeah. 100% I agree, man. But it's interesting to see. I mean, for the audience that we have is that like right now on Instagram, sometimes it's more interesting than Twitter. I don't know why, you know, like audience we have is like mostly like drop shippers where like teaching about EU markets. But I mean, like for the for the, the agency model, it's perfect Twitter, to be honest. And like the connections. I mean, two years ago, you know, when I went to Dubai, it was like a whole different vibe than, you know, like right now. Because now when I go, there's always somebody I can meet who I like met through yeah. Twitter, for example. Remember how we met? Yeah. Just bumped into each other. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, right? it was a, a trove. trove. A trove. Oh, yeah, yeah man. Yeah, man, you take a ciggy. You know, it was funny because I just met you and said like, hey, do you have a ciggy? Oh, yeah, sure, man. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, that was the first question I asked. Yeah, quite funny. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, it was like four months ago or something. December, I think. Yeah, man. And as well, like Andre, what's up, G? No, How but you, that's like doing? six months already. Can you believe that? Yeah, six? Six months. Holy shit. Insane. Really? Damn, bro. What a difference. Yeah, my crazy shit. So let me ask you this. Um, <clears throat> so like in terms of money, Twitter, do you cringe more these days? Or do you like, all right, it's or interesting. You, you know, like good guys. <laughs> you, you know, you know, like just be honest. No, I cringe more. The thing is, I'm muted. If even like 90, okay, I'm not going to, no, fuck it. I'll say it. 90% of the people I follow are muted, let alone everyone else on Twitter. Like I don't really. Is that why you stopped uh, liking my tweets? No, you're not muted. You're not muted. <laughs> Thank you. No? No, well, like, you're not me. <laughs> Proof or did it happen? No, no, no. <laughs> like 90% of the people I follow are muted. And yeah. I unfollow pretty much everyone because, I mean, like, why the fuck should I follow some random dude that tweets about SaaS? Like, what, what relevance does he have to my life? None. And also, like, I find that I've got already got a very good group of friends outside of Twitter. Some of them who I met through Twitter. And I've met a lot of people through Twitter. And 99% of the time... I'm extremely disappointed when I meet them in real life because yeah. they, they don't have basic social etiquette. They're kind of stupid. They're weird. They're cringe, whatever. Yeah. Like, and this is the case with 99% of people in the world, by the way, not just guys on Twitter. But yeah, they're just a little bit weird, like not my crowd. So I don't really view it as a network. I view Twitter differently now. Now I view Twitter as a place to acquire leads for my newsletter, to sometimes make connections, but I feel like mo I've... I don't know. I feel like I've extracted like as much value as possible yeah. from Twitter at this point. And I have all my friends in real life. And I mean, I meet people who are rich every single day. Just the fact that you run a big business isn't not impressive to me. You know, like mm -hmm. I have friends who are doing huge numbers in business just because a guy on Twitter is like, just because their business is big doesn't mean I want to network with them. Like, it's not like they can put money in my pocket simply because they have a big business. And it's not like they would either. And I don't want to be friends with people just because they make money. Like I already have filtered people out who True. make money that aren't cool. True. So do I cringe more? Yes. I think it's, it's like, I mean, it's just getting bigger. And when you, anything gets bigger, it gets worse because all the normies are coming in. Like I was on Money Twitter like three years ago <laughs> when Tate was really small on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Tate and Joe Lemty, remember? Yeah. The uh, Gumroad yeah. course and stuff. Yeah, that was yeah. crazy, yeah. man. I was on Twitter back then. Then it was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and it still is cool, of course. Like you get some fire takes. And when the beef happens and the drama, like, it's funny. 
But and I used to beef a lot of people on Twitter too. Really, like, bro. You know, you didn't follow me back in the day? No, no, nah, no. I used no. to beef a lot on Twitter and just call people out all the time. Bro. Every day of the week. Twice on Sunday, bro. Really? Yeah, bro, literally. Yeah. I, used to, <laughs> <laughs> I used to beef on Twitter a lot. Not even because, like, it was mainly just out of boredom. But no, nah, I can't be bothered to do that anymore. Like, I, I was honestly surprised, like, you know, following Zarek and the very first time we met. Like, I was surprised how friendly you are, bro. Yeah, dude, he was, <laughs> was telling like... me that. It's funny, though. Like, it's not like I'm trying to be a different person online, though. It's just... It's funny, bro. It's like to beat people online. Yeah, it is. And when you see it happen, like Tate and Colty, that was like one of the best beefs I've seen on the timeline. Oh, that was crazy. And then you got a recent one as well of Brandon and David. <laughs> that one's crazy. It is. I have no comment on that, but that one's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. We'll let it marinate for a bit. Yeah, let it cook. Yeah, man. Cook, yeah, man. Hold up, let him cook. <laughs> yeah, let him cook. So like, what do you think, bro? I want to hear your opinion as well. You're quite like, like biased maybe on it, but like on money Twitter, like besides... The leads and stuff. So, what do you think of it? Uh, I mean, I mean, it's not right. <laughs> it's not right. <laughs> it, it is like helpful in some way. I, I follow if you like DR people on it. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. And then just post stuff, Bro. get leads. That's to be it. honest, the affiliate marketing DR guys are the funniest I love guys them. on Twitter. I love them. No cap, man. Really, right? It's so based. It's like down to earth. Actually, sharing valuable stuff. It's like, yeah. Yeah, those are the best to be honest. Right, so I want to open a very nice topic. <clears throat> Woman. <laughs> so let's start with you, Z. Um, I mean, I don't know anything about women. Like, what yeah, is like, that? Wh why do you think he? He's, why do you think? Yeah, he's credible. Like, he's okay, you know what? Let's you know, let's start the crazy part later. I want to start with you. I, I don't know if you want to talk about it. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Okay. It's all so, right. um, when I met you uh like a trove and then like i don't know like i don't know like two weeks later we were hanging out eating chilling Alberti. and then like you told yes yeah, amazing place and then like you told me that you were getting married in two days and i'm like what two days yeah. what's going on so explain the story please yeah so last year i became serious with the religion of islam i'm not gonna share all the details of my past life but it wasn't very religious and then, yeah, basically, I told my sisters and my mom that I'm on the hunt for a wife. <laughs> and they started sending me some candidates. And there was one that I liked. And I said, okay, okay, let's talk. Let's talk, <laughs> brother. You know? So, yeah, we started chatting with her. That was in uh, August. I was still living in Istanbul, Turkey at yeah. that time. And then month into, yeah, just like she was, she was still in Russia, in Chechnya. Mm -hmm. And then I said, okay, let's meet. Uh, so I flew there for a day for our first date, and already then I knew that, like we we're gonna get married. It's like it's done. And the thing is, like for for those who are watching, and if you guys don't know enough about Islam, it's like unseasoned. there's no yeah. If you're unseasoned, unseasoned right? Yeah. Like there's no such thing as dating in Islam. It's like Haram. whenever you know you engage in the conversation with a girl for like I don't know even a month or even a few weeks, like she knows and. Ideally, both of you should know that the only outcome of this is is marriage, right? Because like. You can't fornicate, like you can't do all, all this haram stuff. It's mm. like, there's only one outcome, which is marriage. So yeah, we met in September. And then the second time we met was in uh, October. And, and that's when we started like prepping for the wedding, basically. And then, yeah, the third time I met her, we we're already married. Uh, unfortunately, I could not attend the, the actual wedding because of the, you know, if, if I fly to Russia, I might not come back. And even worse, they might draft me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. Imagine him with the fucking AR. <laughs> Damn, bro. So they did the wedding without me, and my wife flew over here in January, and yeah, happily married. So, yeah, so let me ask you. So, at first, I want to say, <clears throat> especially after two years Dubai, uh, because I would not say this before I was like traveling and stuff, Mexico, Dubai, but you truly made the best decision. And mm. I don't only say this. Because I was uh, born and raised as a Muslim, even like as a kid, I went like you know like 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 big shout out to my dad. He always like bring me like you know like to the mosque and stuff to learn everything and pray. But not only because of religion, this is like a very good thing. Why is this also like a very good thing to marry like so quickly and like in this kind of like fashion? I think it like ultimately because you know right now business is my main focus. It just helps you with your focus. You know, because like when I'm when I'm done working, like I don't need to think about ah, I need to get this check kind of date. Ah, what is she <laughs> saying? It's like it just saves you so much bandwidth. 
you know yeah. it's like all right i'm done let's have a dinner let, let's chat let's watch a movie let's go out for a walk it's done you know it's like i would say that's the biggest benefit and and the peace of mind because again if you're in the like unseasoned game of like dating and and whatnot it's just you're just like wasting a lot of energy you know mm -hmm. like you'll spend time with them and then obviously you don't create a family and then it's just like all lost energy and then another chick and again you need to invest time and money into her and mm -hmm. god forbid she creates some sort of drama and that takes away energy from you as well which you were you know supposed to spend on your business or things that actually matter to you and so, each time you do it you ruin their girl for the next guy as well exactly like yeah. exactly and i really love the sayings like she's she's not <laughs> yours it's just your turn yeah bro you know? 100%. It's, it's literally it's like that it would really be like that but let me ask you this do you miss the side bitches already? Do the, I miss what? The side bitches. Like, do you miss them? Like, uh, like the... <laughs> not, not really, no? to be honest. Yeah, okay, I'm good. Taken care of. Amazing, amazing. I love it. So, all right. Um, I want to talk about it with Z. Um, so, tell me, bro. Like, in terms of, like... Like, let me ask you this. What are your red flags? You know, like, when you talk to a woman... Like, like, what are like the no negotiables? You know, mm. like we talked about. Write this down. <laughs> nah, like I'm not an expert, but I'm on Dean as well, by the way, or trying to be more. Yeah. yeah. So I don't really, uh, I'm not going to divulge like, yeah, do this and that. But I'd say like <laughs> general red flags that any man can look out for if he's looking for a wife. <clears throat> and I'm not married. I don't think, I want to get married. Like what he did is completely right. It's what my parents mm -hmm. did. It's what their parents did. It's what everyone in my family does. Same. Um, I will get married soon, I think. Or maybe I'll wait. I don't know. I haven't made inshallah. my mind up. Yeah, let's say inshallah. Inshallah, of course. In terms of red flags, I mean, there's so many, bro. Like, if she wasn't a virgin, that's, that's like already... <laughs> off like, the list. She's off the list for, like, anything long term if she wasn't a virgin. Because yeah. then you don't know, like, what her experiences are with other guys. Yeah. You know that, like, if anything goes wrong or she gets mad, there's a much higher chance she's yeah. just going to go with the next guy. Yeah. And there was at least... Like, if she had even, like, one guy, you know, there was at least one drama, one heartbreak, one trauma. Yeah, you don't want that. And even, like, if it's multiple guys as well, like, imagine imagine you go on a date with a girl and, like, you're trying to do stuff with her, but she let another guy hit on, like, first night. Because yeah. some of these girls have done that, bro. Mad thing. It's crazy. So that's why I think if they weren't <laughs> virgins, it's uh, you can't really have anything long term or... I don't know, because also in Islam, like the woman doesn't have to share her past with the man. But that's yeah. if, it, if she's like on Dean now. But I'm talking about like the average girl. Like she's obviously not on Dean. Um, and it's actually normal to them. They're like quite open about it, which is yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I think that's a major red flag, at least personally. Yeah. Like I can't deal with it. We can't deal with that. Can't deal with that. That's crazy. Yeah. Also, like even from another like perspective, if she's not a virgin as well. Just the idea of her with another man and like that being your wife is crazy. Like I couldn't deal with it. So I think that's a big red flag. Um, another one is just, I mean, if they're obvious, bro. Like if she causes too much drama, if she lies, if she does X, Y, Z, if she likes Instagram too much, always taking Snapchats uh -huh. and Instagram bad. stories, that's crazy. It's a bad addiction. She likes expen expensive taste is bad, but I mean, obviously girls with rich parents are cool, but there are girls with rich parents who don't make you fucking spend on them whereas you'll find some girls in dubai like all they like is going to sushi samba <laughs> and nice restaurants and nice dinners they want to film it they want to film like the stupid sparklers in the club if and also if you meet them in a club that's a red flag i don't go to clubs never have at least like since i got on dean and just you, the girls in there are crazy too i think there's the red flags are obvious and easy to avoid and 99 percent of women have them and especially in dubai like you're not going to find anyone worth <coughs> wifing in my opinion so let me give you a certain case. You've been dating a woman for like a year. And then out of the blue, she says to you, um, I don't want to do this anymore. But totally random. <laughs> yeah. It's not like, random. It's um, going to be random. Like, no, be yeah. let me say this. Like, are you going to say, yeah, all right, whatever. You know, like, like just do your thing. Or are you going to simp because and it's, chase her? The chances are always 99%. That she's either confused or emotional, so nah. like she's gonna come back, or like, like what I mean, would you do? Nah, nah. Depends if I was. I mean, I wouldn't be in a situation where I dated a girl for a year. I would be married to her at that point. But if I was in that situation, and she said that, I would just say no. I would just like deny her request and be like, "That's not happening." Like, if she actually loved me and I loved her, 
I'm allowed yeah. to just be like, no, what are you doing? Like how I find yeah. out why. Yeah. So I just deny the request respectfully and say, yeah, like we move. Yeah. I think fuck that'd it, be we're based. Yeah, based. Fuck it. But yeah. even then, like, okay, there must be a reason. I'd find out what the reason was. If the reason was something bad, then I'd say, okay, like go. But mm -hmm. if I would never find myself in that situation anyway. Because if you date a girl for one year and you don't marry her, that's crazy. Yeah. And it's never random, really. Yeah, she would have a reason. Maybe she doesn't maybe she doesn't view you as high status anymore. Maybe she doesn't yeah. respect you anymore. Yeah. Maybe you did something that gave her the ick. Maybe she found another mm. guy. Like it would be one of those. And whatever yeah. those reasons are, I mean, you can't really recover from them. So yeah. I think the re relationship would be done if she even ever thought that. So interesting. So um, the next question I want to talk about as well is like a topic uh, for me is really important. It's a, it's about like business and stuff. Um, so there's many people they are like a lone wolf there's many people who are like partners you know like they work together but something that's very interesting that i want to talk about is um and i want to ask at first to you anwar is what do you like look at when you're about to do like business with somebody you know like in everything like um like he has something interesting you have something interesting if you will do it together you can make a lot of money a nice success and stuff um but that still doesn't mean like you're going to work with this kind of person. So what do you mm. look at? Mm. To be honest, I haven't done a lot of like partnerships. I only have uh, one partner. His name is Sasha. He is the CEO of Creative Flywheel. Um, and earlier this year, we actually started filtrating clients on the like cultural level because, you know, in the beginning, I was thinking, okay, if the client is spending X amount of money on ads and they're doing X amount of revenue, then they qualify to work with us. But then after a few cases where we work with a few, you know, big brands, but, you know, the founders or CMOs were still like assholes. So they're like, they have fucking five decision makers to approve a 6K invoice. No, like, can deal with that. Mm. Yeah, you see me. It's like, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I would say for my partner, actually, the way we started, you know, working on a business together with Sasha, he was just a, a copywriter. I made a tweet on... I made a tweet saying I'm looking for a copywriter. He DM'd me saying, hey, let me do that for you. So he started writing all the copy for our clients. And then, uh, yeah, I, I noticed that he like really has an edge for direct response. And uh, like we share common, I, I would say like in general, like common views and values. Because uh, I can't imagine myself doing a business with someone who is not based or who is not. Like imagine like having a partner who's like smart, he's good at what he does, whatever long form email mm. drop shipping management whatever ops but then he's like liberal soy boy yeah that's crazy. you know it's like <laughs> no M maybe like he, he's good at what he does but like i can't imagine myself like you know going for the long run with this person yeah so just basic yeah views and values if those are aligned and the goals that's that's also very important for example like we don't take out a lot of money out of the business like i'm very very humble with my spendings both me and Sasha, like we just pay ourselves a salary, you know? But then I know other people that use agency just, and they take out all the cash, you know, each month and then they spend it on like some watches, <laughs> you know? <laughs> to be fair, I, I pay with my watches with info. I don't even- I'm just kidding, bro. Extract it from the agency. No, no. But so like, um, so like, bro, like, let me ask you this. In terms of like views and values, right? Like value and stuff. What are the most important factors in terms of like views and values that like you look at in terms of saying, hey, this is this is the kind of stuff that that I'm looking for and that's like same as me. Mm. Uh, gay people? No, I'm huh? Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. <laughs> no, like, say it, say it, say it. Anti liberal, like if you if you're just like what does based mean? Like, you know, it's, oh, Yeah, indeed. that's that's very nice. All right. Let's get the definition of being you know, like based, yeah. right? Yeah. Honestly, like one of the best descriptions of, of base uh, I saw from Nabil Aziz, salam alaikum brother. He said base is basically like Muslim. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I think the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the most base person. 100%. 100%. 100%. All the time. Yeah, man. Right? It's like someone who is masculine, who is honest, who says what he thinks, who does what he says, you know, and just mm -hmm. like goes straight for it, does not pussyfoot about anything. It's like if you dislike something about me like you just tell me straight away you don't hide it just like basic masculine traditional conservative stuff yeah mm -hmm. so so what i want to ask you as well is that uh like ever since that you uh you know like 
you know, like 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 focus more into your dean. What kind of difference did you saw in your life, and like mm. you know, like for example, like peace or something, and like other factors that have like improved when like like focusing more on your dean. Yeah, I would say the biggest benefit is the peace of mind, for sure. Like whatever happens, and as I told you, like I went through. Is it someone's phone is ringing? No, no, no. no it's yeah. like construction. Yeah, it's like I went through through a bad phase in the business of stagnation. That wasn't fun at all. But like staying on Dean is what, what kept me like positive and kept me consistent with, with the inputs of and, and their quality and quantity. I would say that. It's generally just the peace of mind. If we're talking about like the benefit, you know. But then the other thing is it's like once you acknowledge that Quran is is divine and it, it is literally like the word of God. There's so many evidence. Like the other day I thought about it, and Z, like, let me know what you think about it as well. It's like if you know, like one of the arguments that atheists make is that, you know, the Quran was written by men. It's like when I think about it, you have to be an IQ of 500 to, to do that. Literally, it, it is so, so complex. Even like the amount of times they mention certain words, like, it'll be yeah. like oh, this word. Bro, the, the, the numerical times. miracle, like the numerical miracles of it, yeah. are are insane. That, Too much. No like, human could do that. It's imp- even a group of people can't do that. Yeah. It's like if you gather the smart, like a hundred smartest people in the room, they won't won't put anything similar to it. No way. It's impossible. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So once you acknowledge that it's a little word of God, why would you follow anything else? You know, and and the thing is, it's like whenever non-Muslim people think about Islam, the very first thing that comes to their mind is like the restrictions and the thing they will need to give up, such as like drinking, girls and whatnot. I'm not going to list all of them. But the thing is, it's like, you know, the reason why they're restricted and they're, they're prohibited in Islam is because it's not that Allah wants us to miss out on some fun in life. It's quite the opposite, right? It's like. You know, the, the the comparison that I make all the time is like whenever your parents tell you, like, don't play video games for eight hours a day, it's not that because they want you to, to have a bad life because they know something that you don't know, you know? Or like, don't play with Jimmy because, like, he has a bad influence, right? And like, I want to play with Jimmy. You don't get it because, like, you're, you you can't fathom this concept. You're, you're too dumb for this, right? So, like, the same thing in Islam is, like, if you don't drink, if you don't, like, you know, sleep with hundreds of girls or like hundreds of men, it will only make your life better. Yeah. Like there's no downside to it. It's actually a very, 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 very good life. You know, mm-hmm. that's why I can say like, I did not lose anything and I did everything, right? <laughs> like all the bad stuff you can think of, I've done that. And now I have none of that in my life and my life is 10 times better. Very amazing. So, so like, what about you? Like a question I have for you, Z, is about like, um, it's a work-life balance, hmm. right? So, and and as well in this case is like, uh, how do you say, like our religion is like, you know, like I think it plays also like a lot in your life at the moment. So how do you like go about like the grind mode and the chill mode, you know, like the work-life balance? Like how do you structure this to be like in uh, like uh, your your uh, your uh, your optimal like happiness in life? Mm. Zah. <laughs> <laughs> no not anymore but um optimal ha- I, I don't optimize for happiness at all i'd say because i th- like happiness is just a state of state of being like it's not i, I think about this a lot bro like can you define happiness it's just yeah when you uh, what is like, it it's, it's literally that no the only thing that i could think about is of course like peace and where does peace come from less desires but what if you have less desires then you have maybe more happiness but then it's less fulfilling because you want to do more so exactly. it's so like, like a the the state of happiness is never permanent and you don't want it to be permanent because like i can't think of a person who's like constantly const- permanently day in like 24 7 365 is happy with Bro, his life you'd have to be sedated a sedated right? normie it's like you mu- must be on some sort of strong medication yeah <laughs> or right? like just a normie like you will be happy and you will own nothing right like that's literally just being a normie if you're happy mm. so yeah like i think optimizing for happiness is yeah the wrong way to go about it but in terms of work-life balance i mean when i first started my business 
when I first actually came up and started making enough money to like actually sustain myself, it was a lot of hard work, no social life, no friends, nothing, just at home. Like literally my life was work, gym, work, gym, like all day, dialed in my sleep, like biohacking and all that stuff. Um, now, I wouldn't say I, I even think about, okay, how do I balance my work and life? Like I know there's some entrepreneurs who like, literally spreadsheet their entire day that could never be me like for me it's very simple it's hard work deep like work which requires a lot of brain power gets done first thing in the morning for <clears> me <throat> that's writing copy and then the rest of the stuff i just do throughout the day the rest of the work for me is meetings replying to people yeah um and then maybe like one to two hours a day of just no phone no laptop just thinking about stuff coming up with ideas but for me all i do need to do to make big changes in my business is write copy yeah maybe dial in some systems at my my agency and that's kind of it i wouldn't say i go out of my way to balance it. and then if i'm free in the evening after i've gone to the gym and stuff and i get invited to dinner or i'm bored i'll message anwar or you let's go get dinner like i, w I wouldn't say i even optimize for a work-life balance i think it's just it's my a psyop life. yeah it's a psyop it really is a psyop it's just my life i wake up i work and then maybe i'll go to the gym or go get food with one of my friends so like for the people that understand it you know, because this is a term that's being mentioned a lot on money Twitter. What is PSYOP? Like, what does it mean? PSYOP is something that, well, it means psychological operation. That's what it actually means. But I guess the best way to kind of explain it is it's something that like you thought it was that, but it actually isn't that. Like, it's just a lie. For yeah. example, like people would say 9-11 was a PSYOP. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it was, obviously. But like, you just, it's, I think the literal definition is like, a really big conspiracy or lie that's been yeah. put out there to misguide the yeah. average person. Even like if you don't label it as conspiracy, it is some sort of a narrative that is being pushed by masses that is actually false. Yeah. That's that's what I'd say a psyop <clears throat> is. Interesting. So like COVID as a psyop. Mm, yeah. COVID. Because something I also wanted to talk about was um sometimes I'm on Twitter just scrolling, you know, just chilling a little bit, you know, having some dinner. And then I see like 40 year old guys, day 40 gaming. 40 or 14? 40 year old day guys, gaming. day gaming. And I'm like, bro, I'm oh, recording oh, it, oh, I'm oh. putting it out. And I'm like, bro, you know, like I'm not the most holy person. I try to be as like rich as possible. And I feel a lot of to be honest, but I mean, if I'm 14, I'm day gaming, like <laughs> I'm putting it out on the social media. <laughs> like season, bro. That's like, crazy. I don't know, man. I think the day game um, thing is like, <laughs> if you look into day game, like, and the whole like society of day gamers, it's really interesting, bro. <laughs> Especially the ones who are actually successful with it. But most of the guys who do day game, again, like four out of tens, so, and yeah. it just isn't working. It's like, but they are interesting people to follow. Like they they realize how bad they are with women, so they actually take action to go yeah. and do it, and they do it the old fashioned way. Not through Instagram DMs or whatever or Tinder or some disgusting, gross dating app. Mm -hmm. They're going out in the world and speaking to women. If you're 40 years old and you're doing that, that's crazy though. At least keep it low key. Like don't put it on display. You know? Yeah. yeah if like, you do, why, like, like, why would you try and build a brand around it? Yeah, I'm a day gamer. <laughs> like I, that's crazy to me. Like why would you want to be known? For I don't that? have a wife. I don't have any children. I'm just day gaming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the other thing as well. In general, which I was thinking about uh, with my friend CJ. Yeah. There are some people on Twitter and Instagram, like in our space, where I'm like, why would you want people to perceive you that yeah. way? Like, you just yeah. look like an idiot. Yeah. You really look like an idiot. And maybe their following doesn't think they look like an idiot, but everyone else who's actually like yeah. decently intelligent is like, bro, what are you doing? You look dumb. There's yeah, so much. many cases of that where people just lack self awareness. Mm. I've been dealing with such little self awareness lately. Like, humans have been pissing me off the past few days. Bro, um, Big Mo. And Nico Leonard, the guys who, yeah. they're like friends of mine. I get watches from them. Nico's like one of the biggest watch guys on YouTube or whatever. So there was like an Instagram short, a reel posted of me when I bought a watch from Nico months ago. And um, I was tagged on it in my story. So I was like, okay, I'll repost it, whatever. It was months ago, right? Like I was just reposting on my story. So I reposted that video on my story. And then um, some random guy, I don't know why I follow him. We just have some mutuals, never met him in real life. But we had some mutuals and the people who followed him were pretty high quality. So I was like, oh, whatever, I'll follow him. And I, I used his services once. Um, he sells some sort of services on Instagram. 
for like username swaps and that kind of stuff. So I used his services once and that was it. Anyway, actually, I shouldn't say this because he's probably going to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Let's just let's the, wrestle. The part before where just I just still yeah, yeah I could yeah, cut yeah. it down. No cut that part out. Anyway, so I post this thing about the watch in my story, right? <laughs> I get tagged of me buying the watch. It's like a very old video of when I bought yeah. the watch, and I repost it just to show support to like Big Mo because he's a cool guy. Anyway, this random dude who I've never really spoken to, never been friends with, never met, <laughs> just randomly replies a story. Congrats, Habibi, bro. Like, why? For the first thing was like, why are you calling me Habibi? We're not friends. Yeah. <laughs> like we we follow each other that's yeah. it we're not friends and then i just so i was like okay whatever he's trying to be friendly i just replied and i said thanks bro it's an old video but appreciate it nonetheless and then he randomly replies it was when i bought the the day date which is like mm. a really cool watch he after i said thanks like that's the end of the conversation just leave it he replies and he goes bro buy a date just or a day date next and i'm like what are you telling me to buy okay and i'm like oh i already have i don't like day just like we just spoke about day just their shit watch and it just shows me this guy has no idea what he's talking about. And then I say, nah, I don't like the day just. It's like a poor man's day date. And then he replies again and he's like, or get a GMT or a Daytona. And I was just like in my head, I was like, bro, you're acting like I only have the option to buy one more watch. Like you don't understand what I'm even trying to do. I'm trying to build a collection. And he just kept going like, nah, bro, that one's not good. This one's not good. You're not going to get an AP or a potato. I'm like, who are you? Bro? Low so quality, man. Oh, yeah, like, this who are you to question me about this stuff? Bro, and I don't even... Chills. I was stupid to let the conversation go on, but it kind of was annoying <laughs> me. I was like, bro, like, <laughs> he's acting like I can only get one one more watch. He's like, get an AP or a potato. <laughs> it's like, give me... Bro, maybe when I'm 25, I'll have 7,000 watches. Like, who knows? Yeah. Like, I'm trying to build a collection, not just buy one that I can't have to spend my <laughs> whole yearly salary on one. Like, That's bro, crazy. I buy a watch every month at this point. Oh, holy shit, man. <laughs> so, yeah, I was dealing with that and then, like, some other stuff. Just humans have been pissing me off lately. Lack of self-awareness. Yeah. Mm. That's why I also hate the most, I would say, yeah. in people. It's like, in Dubai, you get that, too. Like, some of the guys who come here, especially Americans, no offense to Americans, but some of the Americans I meet are crazy. They have no self-awareness at all. Yeah. Like, yeah. I remember I was invited to a dinner and... I never go to these things. I never go out when I'm invited to this stuff because I always get disappointed unless I know my friends are going. But anyway, I had one friend who was going. I get invited to this dinner in Dubai and like there's this OnlyFans guy there from America where he's like got the full Gucci outfit on. Oh. Rolex. He's got like a Rolex date just and then his best friend was starter like... Starter pack, bro. bro he, he, had, he had the OnlyFans starter pack, literally. Yeah. And then his friend was like a copywriter and these dudes were just talking like, yeah, we had girls last night after five palm, just doing like being American. And then after that, they were like, that's a violation. He, he was just bro. flexing about his OnlyFans shit. He was like, so, and the thing is when I don't like someone and I meet them in public, I'm, I start being very disagreeable with them just out of like, I've witnessed that a few times. Yeah. You've witnessed <laughs> that. Like I'll just start like pressing them on the spot. And this guy was like, yeah, like, so I asked him, I, I was obviously interested about, not like I'd ever do OnlyFans, but I was asking him about the business model as you do when you're at dinner with a bunch of entrepreneurs. And I'm like, oh, okay, so like what, you split it 50-50 with the girls? And he's like, nah, man, the girls take 0% because they love me. And I was like, okay, that makes sense if it's a side hustle, but like if you're operating at volume, let's say you have an office and you have 300 models signed to your agency, what, you think they love you and they're going to take 0%? No. So I'm like... Well, yeah, that doesn't make sense. And he's like, nah, it makes sense. And he's trying to justify stop it to me. Stop the cap. Yeah, I was, I was literally thinking, like, stop the cap. And this guy was just, like, the loudest person at the table. And his friend who was a copywriter was, like, also super loud at the table. I was like, ugh, you guys are, like, really annoying. Like, I'm wearing a day date. Be quiet. <laughs> like, that's literally what I was thinking, bro. Like, you guys are just... And also, that copywriter, bro, like, I could tell he was kind of newer to it. If you had yeah. just come there without an agenda like, and being more humble and ready to speak and create real connections... Bro, that could have been a valuable connection for me and him. Maybe he could have referred me work. I could have referred him. I'm assuming I'm further ahead than him in, in the business journeys. I, it could have been very valuable for him, but he blew it because he just came with some agenda to show off and show that he's the coolest guy in Dubai. Loser. That's why I don't go out a lot in Dubai with new people because they're all <laughs> yeah. like this, bro. Yeah. So let me ask you this. So in terms of friends, right? I'm going to ask you, Anwar. Um, and, and, you know, like... Um, did you like drop lots of friends? Like when you start like Mickey Money, uh, HC, you know, was like taking off and stuff. Did you drop a lot of friends? Because there's this discussion. Um, there's like people, they were like still with you and like being cool with you. Uh, they are still in the same neighborhood. Oh, yeah. You know, like a normal nine to five. Yeah, you yeah. take off, you make like, you know, like, I don't know, just like, like way more money, like a normal nine to five. 
um, like either they can stay friends or you totally skip them and you have like new friends who are also entrepreneurs. Um, so how did you go with this? So you mean like, do I still maintain the contact with those yeah, people? Yeah, like do you maintain the contact and like uh, do you keep any distance or do you still have them as friends? Like how do you go about this? No. Uh, I didn't, never had a lot of friends, to be honest. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, <laughs> we're going to wrestle after this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, okay, l- l- take a look at this room. <laughs> Is this a lot of friends? That's like ev- well, everyone who I talk to, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like IRL. Mm-hmm. So I never had a, you know, a, like more than, I don't know, five or six friends, like people that I regularly meet with. So I did not have a lot to give up, to be honest. Mm. But I still have some people uh, that like, I hate to label them, but like I can't think of a better label than like normies <laughs> with everything, with their interests, with their DNG. preferences, <laughs> yeah. worldviews. It's like I have to maintain the contact with them. Um, but it's all right. No big deal. So what about you? Because you lived in so many spots like you as well, but yeah. I think you even more, right? Yeah. So I grew up in, I was born in Scotland. But I'm a Pashtun originally, and I grew up in Malaysia and Egypt. Yeah. And Scotland, briefly. Uh, so did I maintain those friends? Well, when you move around so much, it's hard anyway. Yeah. Because, like, I went to one school until I was seven. Then I moved to another one until I was 12. Then I moved to another one for my whole secondary school. And then for college, I moved to, like, you know what I mean? But there's, like, a few people who, yeah, actually, I did. I did. I have, uh, how many... There's like three or four guys who I know from school. Uh, one, like a couple of them went to a different school, but we were really close. Same friendship group when I grew up in Malaysia. And uh, they're in like university now and we're still really cool. Like I don't talk to them every day. I mean, I don't talk to any of my friends every day. Like there's, I don't see as a guy, there's no reason really why you should be texting your friends unless it's planning mm-hmm. to meet up, um, logistics for like timing and stuff or like talking about business. That's it. There's no reason to text and talk drama with each other for the most part. But yeah, like I still have those friends. <clears throat> Did I try to maintain them because they were my day ones? Yeah, yeah. No, it just naturally happens to be that we still are friends. And in fact, one of them is really successful too. He's like quite famous. He's a model and stuff. I wouldn't say they're normies because um, they were friends with me and I was never a normie. So if you were friends with me when I was younger, like you already couldn't be a normie. And just like you said, <laughs> I only ever had like three or four or five friends. Yeah. Because if you have too many friends... It's weird, right? Like when you have too many friends. I mean, yeah, some people are like more extroverted, right? Like you're friends with everyone. Yeah. Like there's people in Dubai who... Are, and there's yeah. so many people I know in yes. real life who are so cool. It's yeah. like I have nothing bad to say about them. But are they my friend? No, because yeah. they're friends with everyone. So their friendship yeah. is worthless. And they, are, are, they would sit on the fence if they had to choose between me and someone else. Because yeah. they like to maintain mm-hmm. neutrality with everyone. I hate that. So, yeah, I hate that too. That's why, like, the people that are in this room, I really like because I know, like, when I'm with my friends, in order to even, not, like, best friends or whatever, just friend, it has to be, like, us. It's mm-hmm. us or nothing. Mm-hmm. If And then, like, most of these people you meet, it's, like, they are not like that. And obviously, you it won't be like that the first time you meet someone. You have to go through experiences together. But as you get to know them, you just know in this person's personality, are they going to be like that? Are they going to be friends with mm-hmm. everyone? Do they like to sit on the fence? Mm-hmm. or are they like all in with you like it's us yeah. like we're together like it's me and you because those are the type of friends i have and outside of that i don't have any other friends again like it all like comes down to the base filter i hate to like to use that word but like that that's what it is you know like the the guys that, that we prefer to like not to deal with they are like that they're like <laughs> very friendly they don't like they don't really polarize with their views yeah. it's like I'm, I'm friends with everyone it's like, yeah, religion is good, but also haram season is good. <laughs> <laughs> haram season. That's it's crazy. Like, I saw someone post on Instagram after yep. Ramadan, haram season back in order, like holding a beer. No Some way. Muslim guy was like, bro, what? Yeah. How can you post that? That's crazy. Yeah, it's like, you know, like what are your values? Like wh- wh- where do you yeah. stand? Can't deal with them. Neither, bro. That's crazy. Bro, that's... Bro, like, and to be honest as well, like, um, and exactly as you said it, because... Especially for us, because there's now so many things that we can do as like a man, you know, because um, we are so like fortunate to be born in like a situation and situation we're in right now, of course, because of Allah, you know, that we're mm-hmm. in. Um, and we can do like almost anything we want. 
Yeah. Almost anything we want. And and then if you still consider like what has been the most like uh, like fun times you had as last. <laughs> and you know, for me it's always just having fun with the boys. Yes, bro. That's the yeah, best, bro. 100%. When we went to, really. When we go to golf and shit, we should yeah. go after this actually, low key. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. like when we go golf or go karting, bro, those are the funniest times yeah. ever. Literally doing brokey shit, yeah. like normal people shit <laughs> yeah. with my friends. Like that's true. the most fun ever. True, true. Like what? You think I have fun like spending money, buying watches, nah, flexing? Hell no. Nah. Go karting is like go karting is thirty dollars. Yeah. Or, or 50, just like whatever. driving in the car with my friend. Or yeah. stepping out the restaurant for a ciggy. This stuff is fun. Yeah. The most fun you'll have. And you know what's sad, bro? What's really sad? Most of the people in our space will never have the friendships that we have. That's true. They will never have those dynamics. Like you meet a group of guys who are friends. And it's like you realize after meeting them that they're only friends, quote unquote, yeah. because they run econ businesses together. Like that's it. That's the only glue that holds them together is that they all yeah. run econ businesses. Like you guys would yeah. not be friends outside of this. We are friends and all of us run different businesses or similar but different. And that's because we actually like each other and we have good times together. And it's yeah. a good dynamic where it's actually funny. Like when I'm hanging out with you guys or just my friends in Dubai in general or all over the world, anyone who's my friend, I feel like I'm back in school when there's, you know, like just making fun of each other, doing dumb shit. Most of these friendships you see these days, it's like there's no, there's nothing fun yeah. about it. You guys are just friends and you go for dinners together and you go on holidays together. But like, what do you really talk yeah. about? I, you just sit there and talk about your fucking e-com ads and, and then <laughs> talk about other people, like a bunch of like girls, basically. It's, you're, there's no real friendship. And yeah. it's so, so rare. Yeah. Bro, and I'd say as a piece of advice for anyone who wants to find that and they're go in that phase where they're like not a normie, but they're trying to make money and you want real cool friends like you had in school, I'd say the more polarizing you are in person and online, yeah. the yeah. more likely you'll find those friends. Stand, because, stand on your ground. Yeah, stand your ground because you're going to repel everyone who you wouldn't even want to be friends with in the first place and yeah. attract all the people who think, you know what, this guy's fucking cool. Yeah. And then you meet them in real life, you probably will get along very well. Yeah. And you're likely to become better direct response because that's what all it is, right? Yeah. Repulsion. It's like, yeah. Exactly, man. And this is well something, uh, one of the reasons why I decided to put out myself on, like with a personal brand is mm -hmm. because you may see yourself in a certain kind of way, but if you don't express yourself online, like you will never... Oh, this is like you will never just find the same kind of persons who are like you. So the personal brand thing, it helps a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if the guy you meet online, he's the same as in real life, which yeah. doesn't happen very often. We know it. Uh, it's, you know, it's it's so amazing. It's crazy. So as well, like about, you know, like long form, I want to talk about it a bit. So because yeah. I remember uh, sometimes like you do some crazy research. So... Maybe you can tell like to people as well, like what is long form and why is it so good? Maybe you can explain it. And why are you so good at it? Also that. He's not. I told you. <laughs> yeah, he's shit. Yeah. Mid. Yeah, he's mid. mid. Yeah. Um, what is long form? Okay, so I guess the most simple way to explain it is, I mean, what is long form? I think the better way to say is like, what is copywriting, right? Yeah. Because long form is just a form of copywriting. Copywriting is we're using words to sell something to somebody. So when you scroll Facebook, you see an ad, you see like it says, click here to buy now. You click there and you buy the product. Those words you read that said click here to buy now, that's copywriting. Um, long form copywriting is like the most, what would the word be? The most, is like the core of all direct response mm -hmm. marketing, long form. That's how I'd say it. And that's because... How much? How long is a century? Ten decades or a hundred years? I mean, ten. Fuck, That's the century is one hundred. Decade right? is ten years. Decades right? yeah. ten years. Yeah. So, so for like, I mean, since the beginning of time, of course, but for decades and decades and decades, people have been using and making hundreds, making billions of dollars every single year, selling stuff to people using long form copy. So yeah. using a sales argument in writing yeah. over a long form. So it might be four thousand, five thousand words, and the reason it works is because. Well, when something's longer, you have way more time to, you can put more, ar you can put more behind the argument, essentially. Yeah. You can give them a ton of reasons as to why their life will be better with this product. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'd, th I'd say that's why long form works. And also if someone is suffering from something really, really bad, like they have cancer and they're about to die, like stage four cancer or something. And you tell them like, if you read this book, 8,000 word book you might be able to cure your they will yeah. read the book 
yeah. and they will buy the product at the end. You, you yeah. know what's funny? Sorry. Did, did go you ahead. Go me? ahead. Like, I hear a lot from people like they say, "Oh, I would never read this." Like people who are very opposed <laughs> to long form. I would never but, read this. But like, whenever I give them an, an example, for example, if you would say that Farouk, it's like if you would say, "I would never ever read long form." If a headline would be how um, Dutch dropshippers uh, with the beards, like you know, run their stores efficiently and profitably, whatever. If if the headline and the lead of that would resonate with you enough, you would sit for two hours. Like mm. maybe not straight away if you, if it would catch you as an ad, but you would like carve out some time in your week to sit down and watch it in full. You know, yeah, that's that's how you know someone's fucking stupid as well. Oh, I would never read that. And like like I've yeah. shared in the past when I was less experienced, you share like your offer with somebody or or a piece of copy, and it's yeah. like it's like a women's weight loss supplement. You share it with like a jacked guy. Yeah, he's like, oh, I would never read that. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you're not a fucking fat woman. Obviously, exactly. you wouldn't read it. Exactly. It's such a dumb way to look at things because it's so like. It just shows how yeah. like small-minded you are exactly. that you can't expand your mind to put yourself in someone else's shoes, which so is true. actually the core skill behind converting someone with direct response is yep. being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes. And that's why market research is the most important part of writing a winning ad. Yeah. Because if you understand what the market is feeling and what they're thinking, what the news is telling them, what their family is telling them, what their parents say to them, what their kids think of them, then you can construct an argument that relates to them so well that they'll be like, this person gets me. And then they'll buy the product. Yeah, Whereas I remember. I, I remember one of my sisters. She she was like eighteen at the time. Um, I was sitting next to her, and I caught her reading a sales letter, by some some skincare product. <laughs> you know, yeah. and she was like knees deep into it. It's like three three fourths of it. Yeah. So and yeah, because like another argument that I hear all, all, all the time is like, no, like Gen Z will not read long form. It is true to a certain extent, but again, it just like comes down to how well it is structured. You know, maybe with them, like with with a younger audience, you would have to make the design more engaging or whatever. Has anyone really tested that as well? Because I feel like the products that get sold to Gen Z don't really need long form as much. Oh, that's like, true. That's true. And like they're like fidget spinners. And yeah, shit, yeah, know? and they're priced lower, so and also they can't spend not. as much. They're just a shit audience to sell yeah. to. True. Especially like on TikTok and stuff. Yeah, like you we test be, a lot in Germany. Yeah, you yeah. wouldn't be selling them like anti-aging supplements. But I, I'm curious because there's a lot of supplement brands that kind of target like young athletes, right? I wonder if they ran a long form offer, or if anyone has properly tested that. And I'm sure they have. Mm. But in theory, it would work. I would bet on VSL. No, because dating easier offers to work. consume. Yeah, of course, long form VSL. But dating offers work for young people. Oh, yeah. 100%. They convert like crazy. 100%. What's that? Um, I really love that DR funnel called the F formula. Have you seen it? No. It's like a dating offer from a chick. I was like teaching you how to... how to. Oh, is it like the text messaging one? Probably. I think I've read that sales letter. <laughs> that yeah, was, yeah, That yeah. was good. Interesting. Mm. So, so, guys, let me ask you this. Did you break any generational curse in terms of wealth, you know, like within your family? Um, be ready I'm gonna ask you also this yeah. okay to be completely honest I would say no um, I don't want to like obviously I, like say too much because I'm really like careful about even mentioning my family on the internet but I will say like my dad was pretty successful we had a lot of ups and downs like don't get me wrong we've been like same we've been like poor before but we've also been done really well and my grandfather was like a well-known public figure who was extremely, extremely successful. Um, he had two wives. He had like, I don't know, 15 to 20 kids. Based. Yeah, very based man. He he was extremely wealthy. And I mean, by, he died, I think, when I was like, hey, anyway. But yeah, I wouldn't say I broke a generational curse. Have I? Am I probably the youngest in my family, like extended family too, and the most successful? Yes, definitely. Yeah, um, same. But in terms of like, I mean, what is cash flow anyway? Net worth is all that matters, right? So I'd say, no, I didn't break a generational curse. But I definitely have done much better at a younger age than anyone else in the family. Mm. You are on the track to break it, let's say, like that. A little bit like that, right? Yeah, I'm on track to break it, though, for sure. Inshallah. Inshallah, yeah. And you, brother? My story is quite similar to, to Zarek's, but I would say my dad was the, the, the first person like in our family tree to start like making substantial money and he his cash flow wasn't really that good like he he was in the real estate but he still is 
Uh, and he MRR m- wasn't like busting or anything. <laughs> yeah, stripe wasn't go- going pr- brazy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he made most of his money like from deals. You know, mm. he would like buy some land, build it like some property, and then sell it. Mm. And that would like happen twice or like three times a year. You know, and those would be like big six, seven figure deals, like net cash. So I haven't broken that yet. Uh, but in terms of cash, yeah, like monthly cash flow, yeah, I did that. And uh, yeah, if we also look at the age, yeah. But but again, like, you know, my back then in 90s, there were no such, such vehicles. So it's it's not really fair to mm-hmm. compare what we do to, you yeah. know, to yeah. our parents. Because like, I think with my dad's discipline, and he's a very, very smart guy. Um, if he would be given the, the tools and like all the opportunities that I have right now mm-hmm. with the internet and whatnot, like he'd be far ahead, hundred percent. I'm not as near as smart as he is. Like, he's my he's my hero. He's he's a G, real G. I would say like, kind of based on what he said as well. Like, I haven't broken any generational curses in terms of like, obviously like I my parents and my grandparents were quite successful, but I would say generational curse has been broken in the sense of like my family is very traditional and they were like you're gonna go to uni. You're gonna be you're gonna be like a doctor or an engineer mm. or like that's what they wanted. They never forced me, so I broke that curse. I'm definitely different in that sense because mm-hmm. I I never I didn't do anything traditional. Interesting, All right, man. So guys, um, so I want to ask you like both of you the last question before we're gonna like end the pod. We still don't have a name yet, but maybe you know like we'll find a nice name later. Inshallah. Bro, you should do this regularly. Yeah, like it's nice. I'd be down as well. Yeah. It's nice. Like once a Can week, just check in. Yeah, yeah wait. Sick, bro. So, so how do you say? So, I want to ask this question. So, what would you say to the twelve-year-old Z? Because there's many out there mm. right now. I love this. Yeah, and then like also, I will also ask you. Maybe also to my man there in the back. Maybe he wants to say it, but I'm not sure. But yeah, tell me, bro. What would I say? I would just tell him like. Start hitting the gym at 12. Probably don't squat because it'll make you short. Um, <laughs> I don't know, bro. It's hard. I just say, yeah, start in the gym. I was already reading. Like, I, I wouldn't even say I was doing anything wrong. But to if I could really tell myself anything, it'd just be like, remember that the situation you're in today isn't going to be the situation you're in in a year. Mm-hmm. And in one year, you're going to look back on today and think, eh, it wasn't really a big deal. Whatever I was going through back then, like, look at me now. Yeah, I'd say just keep that in mind and you'll be fine going forward. It's interesting. And what about you, bro? Honestly, like all the stuff that I do right now, because uh, I've made a lot of like lifestyle changes in the last year with me getting on Dean and whatnot. Um, I would just like try to get into these habits way earlier, you know, because I used to be a musician in my teenage years. Right. And I spent a lot of time doing that and it was fun. Okay. But like, there's no utility to it right now, you know? And like, Z is like four years younger than me and we're like at the same level, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, if I would have started like getting into the right habits, like exercising and reading and learning about business way earlier, I'd be, I don't know, absolutely crushing it right now. I'm not saying that I'm doing bad, but like, you know, I've definitely wasted some time mm, by not focusing on the right things. But I feel like everyone feels that way as well. Yeah. Just Do you extent. feel that way? Bro, yeah. nah, come on. I feel it less, You're of chatting. Course, but I, obviously, bro, there's people like who are like 18, two years younger than me, making more than me. So yeah, weird. but that's like, yeah, okay. But they're like even more rare, of course, mm-hmm. but you do get it. Happens as well. And also, I'll be 30 one day and may, like, who knows what, maybe you'll be worth a billion when you're 30, bro. Mm. You never know what could change. Maybe I'll only have a few hundred million. You never know. Well, if you keep buying watches at this rate, bro. I probably won't make money on them, to be fair. Yeah, you can. Bro, oh yeah, man. There's something, like, I also want to ask you, like, because we were talking about this, as, like, why did you, like, like at some point, like, start buying, like, so many watches? And you explained it very well. So maybe you can explain as well. So this is actually what Nico Leonard told yeah. me as well. Yeah. Which what? is... We got, we got finished up now or are we good? No, no. Okay. Well, just we'll end in a sec. But yeah. the reason I buy watches is because, well, I always wondered, like when I was younger, I always wanted Rolexes, by the way, because I went to school with a bunch of extremely wealthy kids in uh, like my secondary or high school. 
and they all got like Rolexes and I could never have one because like my parents couldn't give me them or even if they could, they would never. So when I started making money, I always knew I'd buy watches and I always like used to watch videos about them and whatever. So that's why I buy watches. But from to actually rationalize the decision that of like the amount of money you spend on watches, like you might spend 50 or 100 grand on a watch, sometimes more. Uh, I guess it's there's a few things. One, I don't buy watches that are going to lose their value for the most part. If you stick with like Rolex, AP, Patek, and you get like a nice piece, it's probably, and you take care of it, it will last, it could last you like 100 years. These watches are designed for that and you take care of it. You can hand it to your kids. The second thing is they're a pretty safe store of uh, wealth. So it's like, this is like having a fixed deposit in the bank, except I can wear it on my wrist, use it to gain status and network with people. And I like how it looks on me. So it gives me a confidence boost and it's a good storage of wealth. So like, and even better, one more thing is I could liquidate this within the hour if I really needed to and probably maybe lose like 10% of what I paid for it. Maybe. And if you're up on the watch, you won't even lose. You'll make profit. So that's why I justify buying watches. It's like if this money was in a fixed deposit at the bank for 3% a year or whatever, I would make less money on them and it would have much less utility. Yeah, that's true. Very good one. True say. All right, guys. Um, where can they find you, Z? Um, go to thecopycouncil.com. Sign up to my newsletter. I'll send you a daily email on direct response, running online businesses and uh, that kind of stuff. So that's where you should find me. Very nice, bro. And you, Anwar? I would say Twitter. It's advertising, but the second I is replaced with the digit one. And if you need help with your creatives, go to creativeflywell.io. We'll take, mm -hmm. care, we'll take good care of you. Yes. Yes, guys, I'm telling you, the best creative agency in the world. I agree. Amazing <laughs> yeah, agency. Yeah, man. So, and you can find me, I mean, like on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, at Ecom Legend. Legend. So, this it. Um... If you like this pot, let me know in the comments. Uh, I enjoy it a lot, especially because, you know, like with my close friends, always lovely, you know. Uh, so, yeah, man, if you liked it, you know, like let me know if you want like a part two, maybe. Also some other guests, um, some other topics. If you want to hear it, let us know. Um, to be honest, I just like interviewing people. I've been doing AMAs for a year right now, also on Discord, you know, like I think most of you also know it. So, yeah, man, uh, like, subscribe and um, ciao.